Well, as I've said before, I'm going to say it again. When you say, while well, I'm in there, that's definitely a pathway to go really deep into a project. So before we get, I need to thank the sponsor of this video, which is GRT Avionics. GRT is an American-based company making highly capable avionics systems for guys like me and you flying on a budget. They've been in the business for over 30 years, and with that, they have a lot of experience. And again, helping guys like me and you flying, uh, trying to have the latest, greatest technology, but flying on the budgets, which we have. You can start with the Mini EFIS, which I've installed here for around $1,700, and go all the way up to the Horizon. And with that, there is something there and a price point for everyone. So if you guys are building a light sport or experimental aircraft, really consider GRT Avionics for all of your avionics needs. For those of you new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. My name is Larry Nelson and I am the Zen Bear pilot. I've been out here for weeks now working on this aircraft because I reached out to GRT Avionics because I wanted to make some avionics upgrades. They thought, hey, great idea. Got the avionics installed, but now I'm like, well, while I'm in there, I might as well make the engine bigger. So this is a 2.75 liter engine currently. I've got about 400 hours on it and I thought about it. I was like, well, why not make it the 2.85 liter? So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be pulling the engine apart, getting ready for the big bore kit to be installed. Today's project is to get the heads off and I got to get those over to Hummel Engine to do some work on them so that we can make more progress on this build. All right, one cylinder head down, one cylinder head to go. Let's get after this because I need to drop these off in uh, Casa Grant here this weekend. So let's jump on to the other cylinder head. All right, everybody, so day, well, actually, afternoon one comes to a close here, and I've got both cylinder heads off, and the reason I've got to take them off is I wanted to refresh them before we put everything back together. <sighs> it's really hot outside, so in case you didn't know, I'm, it is summertime Arizona. It's roughly 100 degrees, give or take, right now, so I'm only able to work just a little bit of time in the evening after work or late on Sundays. But right now, as you can tell, both cylinder heads are off. I've got the package over there from Fly Corvair, which is the 2850 kit. That is gonna be going on. And once that's on, we're gonna be doing the finish up wiring. And at that point, I think I've done so much stuff here. I really need to kind of do my own, not necessarily required, but my own phase one flight test of the aircraft before I do anything else. Definitely a new weight and balance, a whole bunch of other stuff because so much stuff has come off. But tell you what, let's jump ahead to when I'm putting this thing back together or hey, maybe I'll take you along over to the machine shop. So. Let's jump to the next time I'm working on this thing.
Hey everybody, so I'm back out of the hangar and I saw just a second ago, I got my heads reconditioned over at Hummel Engine. Basically just did a, we just cleaned up the head gasket areas, did a, just lap the valves, cleaned it up, get everything ready and put the intake tubes on, welded them on finally. I've used bolt-on ones for a while, but I've wanted to do these for a while. So now that's all done, let's get this engine torn apart and make more progress towards getting my now 2.85 liter engine back in the air. All right, so I got the top cover off, and if you look in here, this is basically all of the uh, rods sitting right in line. So we've got to pop off these caps. Once you pop off the cap, rod piston slide out, start moving in the new one. So, but yeah, time to make a little more progress, and it is definitely hot out here, and I want to make sure this is covered up before I leave because I don't want any sand or dust getting in here while I'm not vehicle. So, all right, let's keep moving. Last time I left off, I'd gotten all the cylinders off and I was making progress towards putting the new cylinders back on. Well, I'm back out here at the hangar today to get these cylinders on. So let's jump into it and start making progress towards getting this engine back together. So it's nice about how William Wynn sends everything to you. It's already pre-installed in the cylinder. So here's the new cylinders you get in the 2850 kit. They come with the base gasket, everything's installed. So really all I've got to do is take this, I got brand new bearings here, put them on the engine, and then we're ready to get rocking. So let's get started installing the first of my new cylinders. All right, last cylinder going in. Just gotta torque it into spec. So one thing that's important when you're doing this is you need to make sure that you've got the build manual because it has all the torque specs, everything you need to actually do this correctly. All right, everybody, so we've made a lot of progress today, but one of the downsides of working in Arizona is how hot it is. Right now it's about 104, 105. As you can tell from my face, I am just dripping. But this morning, what we got done, I've got the heads on, I've got the intake tubes on, I've got basically the top end of the engine ready to torque and do a valve adjustment, which is literally, I believe, all we've got left to get this engine back together. So I'm gonna jump out here tonight after it cools down, and let's see if we can finish things, this thing up today. All right, guys, so I'm back out here. I had to take a break. It was just too hot. It was like 
103 when I left here earlier today, but I don't think I'm gonna get the entire thing put together. What I'm gonna try and do is get the heads torqued down to their final torque setting. Once I do that, I think I'm gonna wrap this video out at that point. So let's get to torquing the heads down. And uh, once that's done, we'll see what time it is. And uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll see if we'll wrap it out or we're just gonna keep it going. But all right, on to torquing the heads. All right guys, so one of the things that's important is make sure that you've got the right manual. So this is the right manual for when you're working on one of these engines. Do not use the green shop manual that comes with the Corvair because, or that uh, comes from Chevy because the torque values will be completely 100% wrong. So I've got the manual. We're gonna start this process. Again, one thing is it does have the torque pattern here and it has the torque settings. I'm not gonna get those out. You guys need to buy the manual. So I'm gonna follow the book. And we're gonna start getting this thing torqued in. All right, one other really critical thing is make sure you have an American-made torque wrench. I know William uses a snap-on. This is a Mac tool, calibrated, made in the USA, digital torque wrench, well worth the money I paid for it. All right, got that head done. Let's get this head torqued into place. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Like I said, a lot of progress today on this. I've got the heads are torqued into their final torque setting. I've got everything basically ready to put the valve train in, which I'm gonna do tomorrow, but you guys are gonna have to wait until the next video. And hopefully in that video, we're gonna do the first start of the 2850 kit. One thing that you'll notice about Arizona is like, I am just completely soaked because even though it's only 90 degrees right now, relative humidity is actually pretty high, so. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, even though they say it's a dry heat, it's not as dry as you think it is. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it out on this time. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it out right here. Thank you so much for watching and for, like I always say, projects in the garage, planes in the hangar, get building, get flying, and I'll see you guys in the air next time.